What? You want to come with us on our ship? Why, yes, I do. Do you understand what you're asking? We're pirates. You know, pirates. The terror of the seas. What do we get out, out of bringing some helpless little kids along with us? I'll tell you what we get. A headache. I know how you must feel. With your sister having been kidnapped and all. That doesn't really have anything to do with us, does it? Well, if you haven't shown up, then she probably wouldn't have been taken. But apparently that bird has a thing for blonde-haired girls, because he was carrying Tetra earlier. She's blonde, and our sister's blonde, so maybe it mistaked her for Tetra? I don't know. Um, we'll have to chase after it and uh, find out, you know, why why it's natural sister. So yeah, that's what we're doing now. We're gonna uh, go with the pirates and um, we will head towards a place called... Our, did they even say what it is here? This is the postman. He's a pretty recurring character here in this game. And yeah, he's mentioning here that girls with long ears and blonde hair have been getting kidnapped recently. And, and actually, I don't really think they mentioned blonde hair, but uh, it is a pretty big theme going on with the girls being kidnapped. So yeah, um, they've been so we have a bit of a theme here: girls being kidnapped by this big bird. So. Going on. I didn't realize this conversation went on this long. Hey, okay, there we go. Forsaken Fortress. That is where we're going to be heading next. That is where this pirate ship will lead once we get onto it. But first. And actually, this conversation here, that. I, I don't know, it seems to have a lot hidden in it. And it, it's hard to understand what's going on here. Yeah, this evil rumors with the Forsaken Fortress, blah blah blah. Okay, let's get this crap now. But yeah, basically telling us that before we go on to the evil island that is the Forsaken Fortress, we need a little bit more to defend ourselves with. We do have a sword, but we also need a shield. And if you recall, at our, at our house, on the wall there is a shield, and that's where we're gonna need to go to get one. So... Thankfully, we don't have to grind rupees for it or anything. Uh, by the way, welcome back to Let's Play Wind Waker. Sorry that conversation took a little bit longer than I thought it did, and I, I was kind of confused for that. But yeah, this is Michael 2 and 7, and this is part 2 of my 3 heart playthrough of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. And in the last episode, our sister Arrow was kidnapped by this bird. So we're going to have to go rescue her at the Forsaken Fortress. And apparently the shield's gone. So let's just head on down here, and cutscene. Now the motions are kind of getting softer here. Uh, by the way, this is a fan favorite track in the game. I definitely like it. This is Granny's theme. You're gonna be hearing this every time you enter this house now, and always kind of puts a knot in your heart whenever you come back here and, f and visit Granny. All sad, and you'll kind of see that when we come back here. 
how it kind of e how it kind of escalates. But yeah, and you know when I was talking about in the last episode how you know it was a good move to give Link a family in this game, we're gonna be seeing that. And in fact, we're already seeing that here with what's going on with Arrow and you know us having to depart outside island. We're gonna be seeing why that's so powerful right now. So now that we have a shield, we can now board the pirate ship. Head out. Out of out. I guess I could have. Yeah. There were a few more things I could. I mean, wow, that looks like the title screen there. I guess there were a few more things I could have gotten on outset, but oh well. We'll be coming back there. Okay, so now that we are on the pirate ship, we can uh, kill time by exploring a little bit. Uh, I don't know what's up this night. You know, I don't think I really have taken the time to go around this place and here you know, and explore it. Um, I don't think there's anything worth showing up this ladder, but I'm gonna just find out I, out of curiosity. Pirate? Well, I mean, we're on a pirate ship, of course we're gonna find pirates. Yeah, so there's really not much going on here. They're just gonna say, go away, leave me alone, blah blah blah. So, uh, we can go on in this door. And, um, yeah, so basically all we really need to do is kill time and, uh, really to find a way to do it. This guy's gonna interrupt us. This is apparently Miss Toucher's cabin, yes, this is where she sleeps. So we don't really want to be checking out what she does in there. So let's go over here. And this guy is named Nico, who actually who actually makes a uh, appearance in uh, Spirit Tracks, apparently. That's an old man, but that's yeah, neither here or there, just kind of a interesting thing about that game. Now, what he's going to introduce to us is a, uh, a uh, new mechanic in this game that I rather like, and we see it, I think we see, yeah, we see it kind of in Skyward Sword, and, and that's really it. It's something else that the deal with the Donkey Kong 64 is swinging on ropes. And, um, there's really not much to explain about it. And he's going over it right now, you just jump on the rope, and, you know, the, I mean, it's pretty much what we would expect how to control it. Use the control stick to swing back and forth. You can jump off, I mean, you know. Eh, come on, yeah, I know how to do this, I can do it myself. I'm not, you know, I'm not stupid. And the objective is to get over to that door. If you hit the ground, then, uh, I guess you are... Uh, to, to be honest, I don't remember, like, if you have to... I mean, you do have to start over because there's no ladder laying up to that area. That'd be kind of cheating. But I don't think the timer actually starts over if you hit the ground. So, 
I know, we'll see that if I do end up failing. But you can always, like, reset the timer if you don't feel like you have enough time. But yeah, just... Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. I, 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 I know I missed the first jump, but I promise you, this isn't that hard. Okay, so you can hit the switch here to... Uh, okay, yeah, you can make everything go down with that, and then you could reset it like this. And yeah, you can kind of hear the timer. So I want to be a little bit more careful when I'm making this jump here, and don't swing too far. And I did it again! Are you kidding me? Really? You don't even make it on the first platform? I'm not even going to reset the timer there. Come on, I can do this. This isn't hard at all. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I will admit I have to kind of get used to Zelda controls, but that- Okay, what the hell is this? Nope, that's not going to work either. Are you serious, dude? Are you serious? You can't do this? You cannot do this? There we go! Oh my gosh! That's incredible. Okay, so just kind of stop yourself. You can hit R to stop, and you can kind of, you know, regain your... You can kind of start over, so you don't... Oh, overshoot, I almost undershot there. This is incredible. Incredible how bad I'm doing this. But yeah, just if you don't feel like just jumping straight off, then just, you know, reset yourself. This is incredible, though. I'm, I've am i never had so much trouble with this, ever. I suppose I could probably make the jump through the door, but I'm not going to risk it. Come on, let's turn around. How much time do I have, anyway? <laughs> Watch it. See, I can't hear because I usually keep my volume low when I record. No! 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 Okay, wow, that was a lot easier. Jeez. I cannot be that that is mind blowing. I never do bad at that. Oh, uh, I'm just embarrassed. Of course, I I mean usually I don't suffer from the LPR's curse. I usually do pretty well on camera unless the game's called Donkey Kong 64, which I don't do well on our off camera on. But holy moly, what a what an embarrassing showing I put on there. But, and now that we've done that, he will give us a special treasure. Let's see what this is. To be honest, I don't even know what this is. I don't remember. Oh, don't fall off. Yeah, don't fall off there. If you fall off there, then you are you have to do it over again. And that would be... That would... I, to be honest, I wouldn't even be surprised if I did that. Okay, spoils bag. Um, there are numerous little collectibles that, that you'll be getting fr from uh, enemies... Are, well, we're not always from enemies. You'll sometimes find them in chests, and you keep them in here, and they will, um, they'll be used for s specific things later in the game. Uh, we don't need to worry about those right now. And since I would presume, you know, those are part of side quests that don't really involve combat, I'm probably not going to be worrying too much about those collectibles. But yeah, well, we don't need to worry about them right now. But yeah, now that's all done, the, the, um, that's kind of how you kill time on the ship. And whenever you're done with that, the ship, you know, has already arrived at the Forsaken Fortress, and it's nighttime now. So now we do have to climb this. So that's where Chetra is. And we'll we we'll have to find out exactly how we'll be getting into the Forsaken Fortress. So yeah, this is where the bird took our sister, and we need to break in. Exciting pirate stuff indeed here.
wink. Get used to seeing that wink from Tetra. That always means trouble, and look at what, what we're going to be doing. We are going to go on a catapult in a barrel. That's how they send us over there. Apparently these pirates do it all the time. Those um, seagulls that you saw there, don't pay too much attention to those. You might think that's a, an important thing to look out for in that window, and, you know, that, you know, that thing that they showed in the cutscene there. Where our sisters are being held, just don't pay attention to that. You may think you need to look out for that, but you don't once you get into this place. And Link's just like, fuck my life. Happy birthday, Link. Happy birthday. I guess technically it still is his birthday because it hasn't turned to night yet, you know, since the opening cutscene. And, yep, there's the, the twist to this area that we're about to enter. We're gonna have to do it swordless. Which, I don't know, it, it, it kind of makes this play. I, I, I don't know if I should talk about this now, because I'm probably gonna end the episode right here. But it kind of makes this place a bit of a turnoff for the early part of the game. But I'll go more into, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably go more into wh what I'm getting at there in the next episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, where we will uh, sneak through the Forsaken Fortress and hopefully rescue our sister Errol. So this is Mike127, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out, guys.